Take a look at what's wrong here. That's right, I'm not covering the brake, and this is a common mistake for people who are new to wheelies. Let me show you why you don't want to do this. And yeah, this is actual footage of me from five years ago. Not only did that almost kill me, but it lit the biggest fire up under my ass to actually learn how to wheelie. Maybe you're afraid to do this. <laughs> Maybe your friends just make fun of you for chasing wheelies. That is okay, because you clicked on the right video. This will apply to a dirt bike, an ATV, a Harley, any kind of sport bike you have. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into these eight steps. And I just wanted to add real quick, a little bit of my setup that I've got going on here. I've got three different cameras going today. I'm going to have this camera, which is my Canon M50, my helmet cam, and I'm also gonna have a foot brake cam. Just half-ass mounted up here for right now. Also gonna have my quad. This thing is an automatic. There is no clutch. But one thing special about the quad is that it basically has a handbrake built into it. And this brake applies all four brakes. But most importantly, this is gonna be a foot brake. Not everybody's gonna have a handbrake. I highly suggest you learning the foot brake first. But to be more visual, I wanted to show you the handbrake stuff. That's why I have that. Be sure to wear your gear. I am simply showing you my way of doing this. I can promise you, you'll stay safe as long as you stay within your comfort zone. But you should definitely gear up. Get a jacket, get some gloves. Definitely have a friend with you at least whenever you're trying this. But basically is what we're wanting to do is build the muscle memory to push this whenever we need to, to bring us back down while we're in a wheelie. When we're in a wheelie, I like how I'm using my phone as this, we're clutching up and we're chasing it to a point. But once you clutch up enough, you're gonna reach this balance point. And that's when you're gonna start applying the brake to bring you back down and the throttle to bring you back up. So you can control it right here to stay within that certain point. Thanks, Drain. Thanks. So these first three steps, I want you to practice within your own comfort, move on to the next step as soon as you feel comfortable. I cannot stress that enough. As soon as you think you're ready to move on to the next step, try the next step. If you don't feel comfortable, go back to where you were. Right, so we're gonna start with the basics and that's gonna be dropping the clutch. More importantly, tapping the rear brake right before you drop the clutch. So go ahead and practice dropping the clutch. What you're gonna do is just pull in the clutch, give it a little bit of throttle and let out. Notice how little of throttle I'm actually giving it right now. Just a little bit of throttle and let out on the clutch. It's going to really involve your timing. Remember, don't give it wide open throttle and then dump the clutch, because otherwise this will happen. <laughs> but again, all we're doing, doing no different than... Now you're practicing brake tapping. Don't worry about going super far back, but right now I'm going to do this in first gear. Basically about coasting speed, clutch in, tap the brake, and clutch up, just like that. Again, don't worry about going super far back yet. We're not there. Step two. Now that you're getting comfy having the wheel off the ground and getting comfy knowing where your brake is, start practicing dragging your brake. Now, whenever I say dragging your brake, I'm just talking about riding around, holding your brake down. Leave the clutch out, leave the clutch alone. Just kind of drag your brake as you're riding. Don't do it no hands, obviously, but just get comfy dragging your brake. What you're basically doing is building that muscle memory, reminding yourself that the brake is there. You can go however fast, hold it down for however long, kind of give it some taps, learn how the bike responds to you tapping the brake while you're on the throttle. Step three. So now you know where your brake is, we're gonna move on to step three. Taking what you just learned, dragging your brake, and doing it in a wheelie. By now you should be able to carry your wheelie at least a little ways. It does not matter how far up you're getting. 
Even if you're just like that, just practice riding the brake and pushing yourself back down. Starting from step one, we're gonna build up a little speed. I'm gonna brake tap and dump the clutch and just ride the brake. To practice pulling in the clutch, brake tap, dump the clutch, ride that brake, set yourself back down. Keep practicing that and move on to step four as soon as you're comfortable with what we're doing right now. Step four. All right, step four is gonna be a big one, but it's actually pretty simple. And that's gonna be finding balance point. By this time, you're gonna be pretty comfortable with clutching up. You're gonna be fairly comfortable with the brake, at least knowing where it is. But now you're to the point, you need to start finding balance point. And I can describe balance point in three different ways. One way that I mostly describe to everybody is by the time you're at balance point, which is right about here, you're gonna start noticing the wind change. The wind's gonna come at you from underneath the bars. And this is a feeling that isn't gonna make sense whenever I'm sitting here telling you but if you were to go out and practice you would know exactly what I'm talking about literally feel like it's blowing to push you off the bike one other way is if you're on a bike rather than an ATV you can look straight down your fork tubes and once your fork tubes are completely parallel with the ground that means that you are at balance point like right now I am clutched in and I am balancing with my forks parallel to the ground. The third way is the most easiest and the most comfortable mind setting way. You should be practicing with a friend around you at all times. Have that friend film you. You're gonna feel like you're at 12 o'clock, like you're about to scrape and you're gonna be feeling good about yourself. But really, you're gonna have about four feet to go. We all go through it, we all think we're there, and then we all still have a long way to go. Yeah, that's gonna be the best way to know where you're actually at and how much further you have to go. Step five, we're gonna be talking about body position. This is gonna be a pretty quick one. Basically, I'm not gonna throw a bunch of things at you. Mostly, I want you to be comfortable. Although there are some things you need to keep in mind as you're being comfortable and doing this. A few of those are gonna be stay loose on the bike, grip the tank with your knees, and sit towards the middle of the seat Keep your feet planted and stay full committed to the wheelie the whole time. Even if you're sketched and feeling like you need to bail, stay full committed and just act like you've done it a hundred times. So, step six. You're clutching it up, you're getting comfy with where the brake's gonna be whenever you need it. I told you about body position. You need to learn how the bike's gonna react before you move on to this step. Once you're finding balance point, you need to start throwing yourself back down with the brake pedal. So you're gonna be at balance point and then just slam it back down. Don't slam it too hard. You're not wanting to lock up the wheel or anything. To put yourself back on the ground safely and reset. Don't be afraid to reset. It's something you definitely need to do because if you're letting off the brake and relearning that finesse point, that's where you're gonna start messing up because you got a split second to find that finesse point. And if you're learning, chances are you're not gonna find it again. You're finding that in-between point, in between where the pressure is. And if you notice, I'm constantly giving it some pressure. That is why I was telling you to drag your brake. I'm constantly giving it pressure to where I can find that finesse point in between a lot easier. It literally is gonna be this much that you're playing with the brake. Throttle, brake, throttle, brake, throttle, brake, throttle, brake. Once I fully let out on it like I just did, I'm having to find that finesse point all over again. By the time you do that, just set the wheelie down and restart. Do not chance trying to find that finesse point again because chances are you're gonna be too soft on it and that's where you're gonna loop. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna clutch up and throw myself back down. And the main thing I practiced was from a sit still, but you can do it while you're moving too. Brake tap, dump the clutch and then throw myself back down. If you're on a Harley or any kind of bigger bike that's heavier, you're gonna have a little more trouble doing this, but it is possible. There's plenty of people on Harleys that do this from a sit still. If you're on a bigger bike, you're basically finding that finesse point in your clutch to give the wheel enough traction while it's spinning. Basically just another step. You're wanting to not spin too much, but enough to get you off the ground like that. One thing about being on a bigger bike and doing this from a sit still, is you're gonna kinda wanna give it more throttle as you're coming down because that's gonna be a lot of weight on your forks. Just give it a little bit of throttle as you're coming back down. Go from a sit still, clutch up, and then just more throttle. Take note of how I leave my left leg down. I brake tap and slightly yank on the bars. Notice that this is still the same for whenever I'm doing circles. This is what's comfy to me and I recommend you should try it too. Right, so this is gonna be part seven. And by now, you should be getting pretty confident in how your brakes are reacting, how your bike's reacting, and your body position of where you should be. 
I want you to practice what you were just doing at a sit still from like a little more speed. I want you to start doing it at like a third gear. I am in third gear right now. Clutch up and then just sit myself back down. You're just practicing this with more speed. And this is gonna really build your confidence. The confidence is gonna be key in making sure you can drop back, which is gonna be our next step. So again, doesn't matter how fast I'm going, I'm chasing it right now. And I just set it back down, just easing on it. Just a little more pressure as I'm going and just keep playing around with the pressure and the finesse point. If you're on a bigger bike, be sure to give it more throttle as you're coming back down at a higher speed. Part eight. So this is gonna be step eight. This is gonna be dropping behind balance point. And with this, you're really gonna be playing with fire. Be plenty comfy with where you're at before you're moving on to dropping behind balance point. This is gonna involve you staying off the brake so you can fall behind balance point and then catch it before you go too far back. If you're on a four stroke, you're gonna have that little bit of assistance to where the bike's gonna wanna pull itself back down. But if you're on a two stroke, you're gonna notice that the bike does not have any give once it gets to a certain point. It's gonna be all foot control. I'll show you a little bit of what I mean. But if I pull in the clutch, it's gonna be exactly like a two stroke to where there's no engine braking. So literally, I was not using the brake or the throttle there and the bike was just wanting to pull itself back forward. So that's gonna really respond to both your throttle and your foot brake. But once you get it down, you can really play around with pulling in the clutch and dropping it behind balance point. That's all I'm doing is pulling in the clutch, dropping it behind balance point, catching it with my brake, and being able to play around with floating it back and forth. But eventually, once you practice these eight steps enough, you'll be able to do this in no time. It's all just seat time. It's all a mental thing. It's getting past those mental barriers of thinking you can't do it. It's something you have to literally put your mind to. And I sure hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good rest of your day, night, or whatever. Be sure to share this video with a friend that may need help. Help your friends out, man. If you ever need any further help, be sure to hit me up. But I hope you guys stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.